at this time. I have young got we've got we're, we're we're running a little bit longer than we thought we would. I am gonna go ahead and tell everybody that um Corey has folks for today. Um, and as we thought earlier, they will issue a judgment in ten days. Um but our party is not over, our time is not over. Young lady, you said you wanted to speak? It shall destroy me with the black. We've given everybody a place at the table, baby. We got time. We got time. Can you let this young lady have a place at our table? Yeah. Can you let her have a moment of good time? Yeah. Because they received God the love of the church. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Lynn Maggio. God shall send them a strong I'm here today, and I'm here today to support. The LGBT the LGBT community. I am a straight woman, and I am here to support you and to tell you that our God loves everybody. And everybody here on this step with rainbow flags have a cloud in heaven. Listen to that and believe it. My daughter is 18 years old, and she's transgender, and she is amazing, and just graduated from high school with a 4.2 GPA, and she's in New York City, living off of Broadway, in school, college, pursuing her dream with her parents' support, because I got that child, I brought that child with God into this world, and I love that child, and I accept that child for who she is, and I want her to be happy, acceptance, love, peace, win, that's what wins, and all you can do as a parent, as a friend, as a Christian, is love and accept one another, and a couple of months ago, and I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Sarah and Rosie O'Sullivan. Thank you, everyone, who has made this possible. And I believe today that we want and justice has been served. The, the verdict doesn't have to come in today, but we're here, and we won. Thank you, God. Praise Jesus, and we all deserve freedom. Thank you so very much. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and um, lead y'all in a little bit of a chant. You know, to remind everybody that um, even when you separate church and state, you just say sometimes you just separate and separate the church in your heart. So let's remind everybody real quick. The same thing in the night is in January. Repeat after me, please. Sinners hate. Sinners hate. God does not. God does not. Say it again. Sinners hate. Sinners hate. God does not. God does not. Sinners hate. Sinners hate. God does not. God does not. Sinners hate. Sinners hate. God does not. God does not. Sinners hate. Sinners hate. God does not. God does not. We are standing here today. We have stood here, up to us. we are standing up for ourselves, but we are also standing up for every minority in America. We're standing up for every citizen in America. We are standing up for a fair and just and, and unbiased legal system. We are standing up for what our founding fathers built for us to enjoy as a privilege, but we cannot enjoy that privilege if we do not stand up. The gay community has stood up for, for women through women's suffrage. The gay community has stood by the side of the African American community. We stood by the side of the women's movement. And even though they may not be standing with us right here, right now, we've been standing up with everyone for everybody all this time. This is not the end. This is not the end. Even if we succeed today, we still have more to do. Because it's not over. Say it. It's not over. It's not over. 
It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. That's right. It's not over. We still have to protect and secure our jobs. We still have to be sure that once we pay that rent and that deposit, we can't be kicked out once they find out who we are. We still have to protect our children in schools. We still have to protect each other. So once again, let me run you say it with me. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It has only just begun. It has only just begun. Ladies and gentlemen, we're standing here. I, I, I can't say this enough. You don't know how, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, James will go on ahead and tell you, I was crying and cussing and fussing at him too, because all these little groups were Amen. saying, <laughs> yes it was, yes it was, because I, I, I called these groups when it came August the 8th and there were only 15 of us here, and I said, where were you? They said, well, this one was doing this and that, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I don't care what your issues are, put your personal stuff to the side, let's get the work done, we can go back to worrying each other to death after it's all over with, but right now we gonna stand together. We gonna stand together. Say it again. Say it for me. We will stand together. We will stand together. Say it again. We will stand together. We will stand together. One more time. We will. We will stand together. Stand together. Because that's what's happened. You have seen the birth ladies and gentlemen, of a statewide movement. No time in our state's history have we ever come together on a single issue like this with this type of power and this type of energy. This is our time. This is our place. You know, we have HRC. We have, um, you know, we have Free to Be. We have uh, Montgomery Pride United. I know I'm going to forget some people. We have Equality Alabama. We have Equality Birmingham. They're all standing here today doing the work that they want to do to make sure that we all have a safe place. That we all know that in this country we can live without oppression. We have to remove that oppression from our lives, but once we do, we know that it will be gone forever. But it's still not over. It's still not over. All right, at this time, is there anybody who, is there an equality group here that I have not had a representative for? Carrie Searcy, where'd you go? Carrie? Carrie Searcy? Yes, she is. <laughs> uh, this is. This is your time slot, honey. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, y'all give a hand. This young lady has turned Equality Alabama around single-handedly. Um, she is the reason that Judge Callie Grenade issued the order to enjoy probate budgets from uh, supporting the laws of the state system. Y'all give her a hand. And on behalf of everybody, every day, person in the community in the state of Alabama, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for the love and support. We feel it every day, and we're so grateful to have you guys in our community. Um, as Ambrosia said, I am Carrie Searcy, and my wife and son and I are the plaintiffs in the case uh, in Searcy v. Strange, a case that declared Alabama's marriage laws unconstitutional. Judge Moore's reaction and his choice to openly defy the ruling in our case that brings us here today. And you know, for us, we never really set out, set out to change the laws or even challenge marriage equality in Alabama. For us, we were simply just trying to get legal protections for our family. At first, I admit I was a little naive, and I thought I would go into a courtroom, and a judge would look at the loving parents that we were, and it would be an open and closed case, but, you know, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> to really get an understanding of our case, I'd like to go back and, and share with you a little bit about how it began. 
Kim and I, we've been together for over 17 years now. That's a long time. <laughs> we moved to Mobile, Alabama in 2001. To, you know, basically to, to create our lives together. And... It wasn't long before we both found good jobs, we bought a home, and we decided to start our family. And that's about when our legal battle began. When our son was born, he was born with a large hole in his heart, and immediately we were told he was going to have to have open heart surgery. And it was during that time that I was told that because I didn't have proper paperwork stating that I was a legal parent to my son, that I couldn't administer his care. And for me, that was not okay. And I decided a week after his heart surgery to file my petition for adoption in Mobile County. My adoption petition was denied for the first time in 2006 by Judge Don Davis. His ruling was based on our he stated that only a single person or a married couple can adopt in the state of Alabama. And at the time, there was only one or two states that marriage was even legal in. So it left me no option to become a legal parent to the son that had my last name. And for me, again, that was unacceptable. A couple of years later, later in 2008, Kim and I went to California and were legally married in San Diego. But two months later, Prop 8 passed. And again, we had to wait to see if our marriage was even valid in California before we could come back to Alabama to reopen our case. It was late in 2011 when we re reopened our adoption case in Mobile County, now legally married, and again, Judge Don Davis denied my petition, this time based on DOMA and the Alabama Sanctity of Marriage Laws. Now at this point, we had been told many times that we were just wasting our time and money. That Alabama would be one of the last states to recognize our marriage. And that we should just sit back and wait for a federal ruling.